going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to another video now in today's video we're going to be covering integrated writing and to be honest i was going to be covering both integrated and independent today but i uh, ended up doing a lot of things and it's already 12 15 today so i'm gonna have to be pushing independent writing to tomorrow sorry about that if you were looking forward to it tonight um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna have to be tomorrow. My apologies. Anyways, the topic for today's integrated writing topic is the copper scrolls. Now I want to point this out because you should never ever touch the topic of the integrated writing topic. Yeah, the topic of the integrated writing assignment. Never touch the topic, okay? All right, once again, we're gonna be reading from the bottom up since it's the reading passage and the uh, introduction. While this story has fascinated mystery buffs and treasure hunters ever since, in reality, it is likely fiction and no treasure ever existed. Okay, so the reading's opinion is that something is fiction and that no treasure ever existed. What is that something? The Copper Scrolls, right? So the reading, reading's opinion is that the Copper Scrolls are fake. And um, so the topic is whether or not the Copper Scrolls are fake, all right? And the listening is going to say that, no, they are real because the reading said that they are fake. Okay, so let's see where to wrote the topic, whether or not the Copper Scrolls are authentic documents. So authentic documents sounds and looks much better than real. So I decided to write it like that. Now, the opinion, these scrolls are most likely fiction and a figment of our imagination. So I added a figment of our imagination because that makes me sound smarter, all right? And I did not write the Copper Scrolls again because I already wrote that in the topic sentence. A figment of our imagination just pretty much means something that's made up, okay? All right, now let's look at the first body paragraph. The language of the scrolls presents one of the biggest problems. It is an ancient form of Hebrew for which there are no known documents with which to compare the text. All right, the main point is given. In addition, a close reading of the scrolls shows that someone either by mistake or on purpose made some errors in the translations. All right, now I'm gonna paraphrase that, or I already did paraphrase that into this. Let's read it together. The copper scrolls were written in an ancient form of Hebrew, so there aren't any manuscripts that it can be compared to. Plus, a thorough inspection had found that there were some ins some errors in the translations, which is quite suspicious. Okay, so that's how I decided to paraphrase the first body paragraph. And uh, as I said before, the reading passage for the integrated writing assignment does not disappear. So paraphrasing is going to get you a lot of bon bonus points. And copying the reading passage may even deduct some points from your overall grade. All right, let's take a look at the second body. What is known is that the scrolls supposedly report that piles of gold and silver were buried in certain locations throughout the area comprising present-day Israel. The amount of treasure as described by the scrolls is so vast that it seems impossible for such a treasure to actually exist. Okay, so there's the first main point. Um, the amount of treasure is so large that it seems impossible to exist. Uh, as further mentioned, the Quran sect is believed to have been... Okay, so the second reading... The second reason's main point is that the amount of treasure mentioned in the Copper Scrolls is too large to be real, and that the people who made the Copper Scrolls had no greed. All right, let's see how I paraphrase that here. The amount of gold mentioned in the Copper Scrolls is too large to be real, especially because the Qumran sect, a group comprised of people who have no materialistic greed, is assumed to have made the scrolls. All right, so a lot of paraphrasing happened, and that's how you get... Uh, that's how you get full points for this assignment. All right, let's look at the third body paragraph. Some scholars and treasure hunters have even determined a few of the locations of the treasure, yet digs at these places revealed no hordes of gold and silver. Okay, so there's the first point, and I'm going to skim through this. Whether it is an ancient practical joke. Okay, so people have located some of the places that the treasure should be, but there was none, so they think the Copper Scrolls was an ancient or were an ancient joke, okay? All right, now let's look at the sample essay. Numerous treasure seekers, hunters, and academics, scholars, have pinpointed, determined, some locations of the treasure, but their efforts were fruitless. So fruitless means um, had no rewards. Hence, these empty-handed diggers, so these sad diggers, believe, that, believe the Copper Scrolls to be an ancient practical joke. All right, 
Now, believe you me, um, typing the integrated writing template and organizing the readings information did not take me that much or that long. I'm guessing, I didn't time myself, but I'm guessing that it took me maybe five minutes, five, six minutes. And that's, that's perfectly fine because I'm typing a lot more than I should. And uh, in the real test, all you have to do is take notes. You don't have to type the integrated writing template and you don't have to type complete sentences in the real test yet. So what I'm saying is three minutes of the initial reading time for the passage should be more than enough time for you guys to take complete notes and to have 50% of your essay organized even before the lecture starts. You understand? All right, now let's go listen to the lecture. Now listen to a lecture on the topic you read about. One of the ancient world's greatest mysteries is that of the Copper Scrolls. Supposedly, they reveal the secret locations of enormous treasures buried throughout modern-day Israel. Nice, huh? Now, many people believe they're a hoax. I, however, hold that the scrolls were inaccurately translated and instead reveal that the treasure was buried in Egypt, not in Israel. The Copper Scrolls were tricky to translate because of the poor condition in which they were found and the language in which they were written. The language was actually a combination of ancient common Hebrew and an Egyptian numbering system. Not only that, but there were also many deliberate mistakes made in the translation of the scrolls. The real translations were meant only for the eyes of certain people. A host of scholars wasted their time on the scrolls by using inaccurate Hebrew numbering systems. Robert Feather, who conducted further studies on them, concluded that the numbers were Egyptian, not Hebrew. When Egyptian numbers are applied, the amounts of treasure given are considerably less and therefore more believable. The scrolls date from around 1300 BC, a period when the Egyptians had a strong presence in that area of the Middle East. So it's possible that an Egyptian or a Hebrew scribe with Egyptian training made the scrolls. Feather also determined that the scrolls described places in Egypt, not in Israel. The locations described in the scrolls actually correspond to places near Amarna, a city in ancient Egypt. Throughout history, most of these sites have already been, uh, located, and the treasures have been dug up and carted away. So, if Mr. Feather's theories are correct, as I believe them to be, the lost treasures of the Copper Scrolls have already been found and are either in museums or personal collections. All right. <clears throat> okay, now, before I go on, this is probably the most realistic practice integrated writing assignment lecture because it's, it's quite, it, it might be kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of information on the board. So, um, if you were only able to maybe organize 60 or 70% of what you heard from this lecture, that's fine, okay? Because the more difficult the question is, the more lenient the grading process will be. And that's because more people would have probably made mistakes, all right? Okay, now let's look at the listening's opinion. The Copper Scrolls reveal secret locations of treasure, and they are not a hoax because... They were inaccurately translated and actually reveal treasure in Egypt, okay? So, um, the reading passage thought that the treasure was buried in Jerusalem, but it was actually in Egypt, okay? Now, the first argument is that the language was actually a combination of ancient Hebrew and an Egyptian numbering system. And there were a lot of deliberate mistakes in the translations because the real translations were meant for the eyes of certain people. All right. That's all here, guys. Now, the the way I take notes for integrated writing assignments are going to be different from how I take notes for integrated speaking assignments because for writing, I have 20 minutes to organize my, my essay. So I'm going to write down almost everything I hear. And likewise, that's what I'm going to advise you guys to do for integrated writing. Literally write down every word you hear or every word that you think is important, okay? You don't really have to write down conjunctions. 
oh yeah you do okay you have to write down conjunctions but you don't have to write down prepositions um, you don't necessarily have to write down adjectives but the more nouns and verbs you write down the better you're gonna be okay all right so that's the first argument oh and the last thing here so many scholars used inaccurate numbers when translating the scrolls and uh, a famous archaeologist named Robert Feathers concluded that the copper scrolls were using Egyptian numbers all right now the second argument when Egyptian numbers are applied the amount of treasure becomes significantly less and thus more believable uh, besides the copper scrolls were believed to be created in 1300 BC which is when Egypt had a strong presence hence uh, the possibility of an Egyptian scribe having made these scrolls is very very high it's fairly high all right so it's opposing the reading second art second reason the Qumran sect didn't create create this and um, yeah when 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 Egyptian numbers are applied the amount of treasure becomes more believable all right okay now the third argument the copper scrolls describe places in Egypt um, near the city of Amarna near or in the city of Amarna uh, furthermore the treasure or the locations have already been located or the treasure yeah the locations of the treasure um, have already been located so the treasures have been dug up and carted away consequently they are either in museums or personal collections as we speak so once again the uh, treasure hunters mentioned in the reading passage went to the wrong destination they assumed that it was in Jerusalem and they didn't even think to go to the city of Amarna in Egypt so they wasted a ton of time that's what the lecture is saying for the third argument all right now let's go back to my laptop and look at the finished project all right I just finished typing up the essay now let's take a look at the lecturer's opinion on the other hand the listening adamantly delineates that the copper scrolls reveal secret locations of treasure buried in Egypt not Israel I think I said Jerusalem but it's Israel okay meaning that they aren't a hoax as they've been inaccurately translated okay now let's take a look at the first argument the lecture's argument nonetheless the lecturer offsets these points by declaring that the language shown in the copper scrolls is actually a combination of ancient hebrew and an egyptian numbering system plus many deliberate mistakes were made in the text since the real translations were only meant for the eyes of certain individuals you probably heard my dog walking down the stairs just now in other words scholars used inaccurate numbers when translating these scrolls and a respected scholar e named robert feathers has even claimed that the numbers are egyptian okay please don't forget that it's your responsibility and your duty to use your outstanding and stellar writing capabilities to squeeze out as many bonus points as possible so please make your sentences a bit more elaborate than they would normally be but don't if ex overextend yourself okay so s stay in your lane you know don't don't do something that you're not going to be able to complete but don't forget to put forth your best effort all right now let's move on to the second argument the professor in the listening further asserts that when Egyptian numbers are applied, the amount of treasure in the copper scrolls becomes drastically smaller and thus much more believable. These scrolls are believed to have been created in 1300 BC when Egypt had a strong presence. Hence, the possibility of an Egyptian scribe having made these scrolls is fairly high. All right, now let's move on to the last argument. The speaker in the lecture counters these indications by insisting that the scrolls describe places in Egypt near the city of Amarna. Most of the treasure has been located and been dug up or carted away. As a result, the hordes of gold mentioned in the copper scrolls are now in museums or personal collections. Alrighty, that wraps up today's video, boys and girls. I hope you guys enjoyed the sample essay and the uh, information in today's integrated writing assignment. Hopefully, something like this repeats itself many times in the real test so that what you learned through today's video becomes useful and becomes handy even in the future. Um, so from now on, whenever the integrated writing assignment happens to be about Egypt or, you know, some scrolls, the information that you saw here 
and the information in the real test um, are hopefully kind of similar. All right, if you have any questions, please use the comment section to your advantage and uh, feel free to reach me for my uh, services if you have any questions or inquiries about that. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video, which, can, which is going to be covering independent writing. If you have a particular or certain essay topic that you would like me to cover in that video, please mention it in the comment section. But don't forget that you don't have much time because I upload videos almost every single day. All right? Okay. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.